Hello everyone. In the preceding chapters of biology, we have learned about the different processes which goes inside the body of the living organism. We have seen the different life processes, different techniques of control and coordination, and also about the different methods used by the living organisms to reproduce. We understood how the body of the living organisms works from inside, but we never talked about how these organisms behave in the outside world. So let's move a step further and see how these organisms behave, what is their role, and what is their place in the world. Since the beginning of life, various living organisms interact among themselves as well as with the surrounding environment like soil, air, and water. For example, plant interacts with soil to get various nutrients. They also use water, sunlight and carbon dioxide from the air to produce food. Different animals interact with air to get oxygen. They obtain their food either from the plants or they consume other animals. All these interacting organisms in an area together with the non-living constituents form an ecosystem. All the organisms in an ecosystem are dependent on each other and on the non-living components of the ecosystem. So we can say that an ecosystem is self-sustaining which means it does not require any external help for its sustenance except sunlight. Let us try to understand this with the example. You must have seen ponds at some point of time so we are taking the example of pond. If we talk about the physical environment it includes air, water in the pond and soil and rocks surrounding the pond and beneath the pond. We know that in the vicinity of a pond, a variety of organisms can be found. There are ones which we can see like different fishes which live inside the water or different birds which can be seen standing on the shoreline or flying above the pond. Phytoplanktons, which is the green substance that we often see floating on the surface of water, it is a type of aquatic plant. There are also organisms which cannot be seen directly with the eyes. They include the tiny aquatic animals called zooplanktons, different bacteria, and fungi. All these living organisms are interdependent on each other. For example, zooplanktons eat phytoplanktons, fishes eat zooplanktons, and the birds eat fishes. Bacteria and fungi decomposes the dead animals and plants. These animals also interact with the physical environment like the fishes utilize the oxygen dissolved in the water. Since all these organisms are interacting among themselves and with the surrounding environment, we can say that the pond and its surrounding environment form an ecosystem. Now from the above example, we can say that the ecosystem has both living and non-living constituents. From this, we can conclude that ecosystem has mainly two components. All the non-living things like air, water and soil along with the chemicals like nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen and carbon dioxide forms the abiotic component of the ecosystem. All the living things as in the case of ponds were phytoplanktons, zooplanktons, fishes and birds form the biotic components of the ecosystem. Now the biotic components can be further divided into producers consumers and decomposers depending upon their role. Now when we talk of the case of pond where the phytoplankton produces their food by the process of photosynthesis, they are called as producers. Consumers consume food prepared by the producers either directly or by consuming other animals. For example, zooplankton eat phytoplankton directly so they are consumers. The fishes consume zooplankton and the birds consume fishes, so the fishes and the birds are also consumers. Consumers can further be classified into herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and parasites. Herbivores are the ones which eat plants only. As in the case of pond ecosystem, the zooplankton are the herbivores. Other examples include sheep, deer and cows. Carnivores eat other animals only and in the example of pond ecosystem, the fishes and birds are the carnivores. Although all birds and fishes are not carnivores, some eat plants also. Other examples include lion, tigers and wolves. Omnivores are the ones which eat plants and animals both 
for example human beings and bears parasites are the one which derive their nutrition from the other organism without killing them they benefit on the expense of other organism known as host examples are tapeworm ringworms and certain fungi the role of decomposers is to decompose the dead animals and plants they break down the complex organic substance into simpler inorganic substance which goes into the soil and are once again used by the plants they play a very important role in the ecosystem as if they were not present then there would be no one to clean the dead matter and it will pile up in the pond ecosystem the bacteria and fungi are the decomposers so we saw how the ecosystem works and what are its components ecosystem can be natural or artificial depending on whether it is man made or not they can also be categorized as aquatic and terrestrial depending on the environment in which they exist the examples of natural aquatic ecosystem includes ponds rivers and lakes the example of artificial aquatic ecosystem is aquarium the natural terrestrial ecosystem includes forest and mountains the gardens and the crop fields are the example of artificial terrestrial ecosystem proper functioning of ecosystem is necessary to maintain balance in nature therefore any activity disrupting an ecosystem must be avoided otherwise it will create an imbalance in nature which will in turn lead to its destruction